I know, right? Ardenweald is something else. If it weren't for the terrifying nightmare tree demons everywhere, this would be the best zone ever. I don't even mind the nightmare tree demons, though. I just want to stay here forever and enjoy this lush, pristine wonder of untouched magical nature. I thought you'd say that, which is why I took the liberty of registering Ardenweald as the official T and E address and rerouting all of our mail here from now on. This is our new home! Amazing! Great choice! I even invited all of our friends over for a housewarming! Brilliant! Oh, here they come now! Cadgar, Jaina, Sylvanas... Telly, no! You know, I hear Maldraxxus is actually shaping up pretty nicely. Knowledge is power. Hello, Internet. Taliesin here, and welcome to another episode of The Weekly Reset. Taliesin and Evertel's wondrous wisdom show in a week where we have new zones, new features, new models, speculation and intrigue all to bring your way as we explore the beautifulness of Ardenweald, discuss just what Blizz was getting ready to reveal in that now postponed June the 9th livestream, talk through the new Torghast, Torment tweaks, go through the newest additions to Shadowlands character customizations, of course, and ask a tantalizing question. Who is the mystery 10th boss in the first raid of the expansion, Castle Nathria? And ooh, why might it be someone very interesting? Yeah, I know, I know. But first, the reason you're already here, Long Boy Watch. Getting the figure for which, I have to admit, is literally the only reason I've logged into the live game this entire week. Simply because, you understand, there's just so much to be getting through on the alpha for your delectation and delight. So yeah, the figure is 3 million seven. 742,000. It's clearly not awful, but it's clearly not nearly the all-important 5 million. Well, 5 million 500,000 really because you know I'd like some gold left over for sweets or whatever. Basically I'm all chill and laid back about it now, making the odd flask, selling the odd bag, but make no mistake as soon as Blizz give us that Shadowlands release date I'm going to realise how little time I've got to make this thing actually happen and look I'm not saying you're definitely going to get a begging video where I cry and ask for your in-game gold but also I'm not willing to say at this stage that that definitely won't happen. And it seemed just possible that Shadowlands release date was due to come come this week. The announcement of the release date, that is, not the release date being this week, because if that were the case, then the title of this video would be, send me your gold, I need all your gold right now, send it to me, daddy needs his long boy. When Blizzard informed the world that they were holding a Shadowlands live stream announcement on Twitch with John Height and Ian Hazacostis, scheduled for Tuesday, June the 9th. An announcement which has just been postponed for pretty obvious reasons, with Blizz tweeting, more important voice voices than ours need to be heard, and now is the time to listen. Which, you know, boo, because at this difficult time, or in fact any time, what would really help me, personally, I think, is seeing Ian Hazacostas' face on my computer screen, but that's just selfish, and like BlizzCon's official cancellation, this postponement can't really be a surprise to anyone. It is, after all, the same reason we didn't feel right making an episode of this show last week, so we understand, as indeed did the forums, where to be perfectly honest, no one even really batted an eyelid about some cancelled live stream for a video game. So busy were they, doing their bit to smash white privilege and no, it was a shit show obviously. Yes, thank you Blizzard for inconveniencing your client to show your support of riots and looting. The next expansion should be called World of Warcraft Virtue Signaling. Really, just like those important voices in Hong Kong. And look, you know how I feel about the whole Hong Kong thing. I made a whole video shitting on Blizzard at the time and it's pretty well known that I am not a big fan of any big corporation. That includes Blizzard. But at the same time, it seems a bit unhelpful to shit on someone when they finally do the right thing, like here. So instead, I'll just say, Awesome, Blizz. Glad to see you and Activision are on board. Now, if you could tell us about your plans to encourage racial diversity among your development teams and how this commitment to listening to minority voices in our community will translate into action or donations, I'm very much looking forward to hearing about that. But here's the thing. I was excited about what they were going to announce before, but now, after it being postponed, it's driving me absolutely wild. What was the big announcement and new content that was going to be presented on June the 9th? I think it's a pretty safe bet that a release date for Shadowlands was going to be the main event in all of this. And even though we already know that the expansion is slated for a fourth quarter of 2020 launch, meaning October, November or December, a specific date is just always exciting to have. 
have. And also means I know exactly how much gold I need to beg, I mean earn, per day for my long boy. Shout out to long boy watch. And with no BlizzCon this year, and the massive workload that puts on the company's employees, I think I'm going to be sticking with my late October, early November original guess, even with the Blood Plague presumably slowing everything down. But the really interesting thing for me is the new content that they mention in that initial announcement. Because what exactly is worth featuring in a livestream announcement rather than just putting on the alpha like you would anything else. Maldraxxus is the only leveling zone left that we're yet to have a chance to play, but I'm thinking it might be something even bigger. I'm thinking max level version of the more zone might be worth a live stream announcement with the level 60 character templates, world quests and everything else that would involve, like that currency you're going to have to grind and collect that you'll need for every time you want to enter Torgas to earn your legendary materials. Because we know now that's how it's going to work, yay! I'm thinking a max level dungeon might be worth a live stream announcement, especially if it's one chock full of well known lore characters guaranteed to capture the player base's imagination, like say the other side, with Bron Samdi, possibly Vol'jin, definitely Hakar, the Mana Storms, and uh, someone else. I didn't put the spoiler but up, so. I genuinely have no idea of their actual plans, and I could, could be completely wrong. This is pure guesswork, so sorry if it turns out to be like a new store mount or something. But the question is, will they just put all of that stuff on the alpha on Wednesday the 10th, as they would have planned for, or will they hold off until whenever the rescheduled live stream happens? If it ever happens, because frankly, the way 2020 is going so far, soon it'll be the earthquakes, then the alien invasion, and then the sea monsters start attacking. So it's just hard to find a good time, is what I'm saying. I guess we'll find out, but one zone that we won't have to wait any longer for is Arden Weald, which hit the alpha this week in all its glowy, shiny, druidy goodness. I'm putting a blue bot spoiler up here because we are going to be looking at the zone and talking light story points. But when Shadowlands was announced at BlizzCon last year and all of us cool kids were going crazy for the vampiric delights of Revendreth, every actual WoW dev that we spoke to was much more excited about Arden Weald. And I have to say that now it's here. It's easy to see why, because this place is stunningly beautiful. Maybe not as unique in its aesthetics as Bastion or Revendreth, perhaps, being a kind of mix between Valshara, Shadowmoon Valley, and occasionally Drustvar, but with all of those influences taken up to 11, and with plenty more besides. It's the third zone that we go through on our levelling journey, arriving there after our as yet unknown adventures in Maldraxxus, and follows the exact same basic setup as every zone so far. We need to speak to the big boss of the zone to sort out this anima drought problem, but the big boss is super busy with the whole anima drought problem, so we've got to prove our way into their company by sorting out a load of problems around the zone, most of which are happening because of the anima drought problem. The big boss in this case is the Winter Queen, a character I personally have been looking forward to meeting ever since that first day of data mining when we saw just how awesome she looks. So yes, I am very keen to prove my worth to the Winter Queen, that is what I would like. And even beyond the obvious beauty, and of the zone, there is so much to love about Ardenweald. There's the lore that surrounds it, that this is where the wild gods and Loa and other similar beings from across the universe come to rest after they die, to be reborn. The cocoons, or wild seeds that they recharge in, scattered about the zone and being fundamental to a lot of the story. Plus the fact that they're called wild seeds and, and that's just funny to me. Especially when there's like so much talk of collecting everyone's wild seed or drawing the wild seed out or being careful not to damage the wild seed because wild seed is very precious. How sometimes things eat the wild seeds, you may have to penetrate those things to release the wild seed from within. And how gathering lots of wild seed is tiring work and you might need a little rest afterwards. And yeah, I'm basically 12 years old, but you know what? So are the quest writers, because I'm sorry, there is no way they are not doing this on purpose. I see you, I see you, you filthy, filthy quest writers. And because of the anima drought, the whole zone, just like the others, is gradually dying. So the Winter Queen is making the hard choices and sacrificing certain areas for the sake of others, creating those more autumnal parts of the zone that you may have seen. Awesome from just the point of view of varying the colour palette, but also narratively. There's loads of bits throughout the story where we return to those dying areas with characters that used to live there and see their sadness at it all, and their concern at the Drust 
that seem to be moving in. Then there is those inhabitants of the zone, including the tricksters and the weird long nightmare tree things which I absolutely love, but more than them, the spirits of the non-lower or non-wild gods, spirits of mortals like us who ended up in Ardenweald when they died just because of their strong links to nature and who take blue ghostly animal forms. Animal forms, of course, that we players will also be able to collect and use instead of the fox for our Ardenweald Covenant ability if we make the zone our permanent home. And you might be thinking, but Taliesin, why would I change the blue fox? The blue fox is perfect, but have you seen the blue squirrel? Have you seen blue otter and blue chonky cat? Or my personal favorite, blue frog boy? Proglo. Proglo being obviously my new favorite character in the game. And look, Blizz, I've never asked anything like this before, okay? But if you haven't got a voice actor for Proglo yet, please consider me for the role, because I've got this, okay? I've got this one. Of course. Proglo has saved this anima to use just for an event like this. Here you go. Take care. And if you need anything, remember that Proglo is one of the bravest souls in Adam Wield. Can love Proglo. And then there's what became the main storyline of the zone, the Baby Yoda style adoption and transporting of one of the wild seeds. A wild seed whose occupant is unknown, but who seems to have a special link to your character. And no, I'm not going to go ahead and tell you who it is, it's only a blue bot spoiler after all, but our mission to discover and then regenerate that occupant results in one of the coolest quests we've had in the entire alpha testing so far, as you eventually become that character in flashback and live through their final moments before the game kicks you out and bricks your character, trapping them in a DC loop forever and rip character because that is currently as far as we are able to progress in the Arden Wield story. Before we even had the chance to meet the Winter Queen, despite the fact that we have already met her during the quest line, but in a cutscene that isn't in the game yet. And I don't feel cheated, but I do feel very frustrated. But all in all, for the incomplete snapshot that we've had, I think it's fair to say it's, it's probably my favourite zone storyline so far. In fact, I like Ardenweald as a whole so much, it's brought up an interesting problem. Because you know how down I am with Revendreth and its glorious bitey boys. I've made no secret of that. Based on initial looks alone, that was the covenant I wanted my main to join. But going through Ardenweald, you know, meeting the characters, taking part in the story, playing with the covenant abilities, which I think is probably the most interesting one for priests as my main is, I could, at this point, easily go night fay or bust on a trip in mission 20k. And that is not something I was expecting to say at all. And it makes me think, I wonder how many other players who are currently definitely decided on what covenant they want to join even before playing any of the game and end up preferring a covenant that they really didn't expect to connect with. I'm willing to bet it might be a fair few of you and I would say enjoy that. And keep that possibility in mind when you are panicking about being forced to pick a covenant other than that one you really want for whatever reason right now. You're currently making that decision based off of the barest of experience and once you are in the game and playing through these zones it is perfectly likely that your preferences could change all on their own. They maybe have done for me. Ardenweald then, as sumptuous as we had hoped, full of humour and personality, absolutely dripping with innuendo and smut, tightly packed with lore, which is more directly relatable to our Azerothian characters than the other zones so far, and another sign that the initial questing in Shadowlands, at least, is going to be absolutely top draw. My mind is still open, I can't wait to go full doom in Maldraxxus next. More alpha news, and let's talk Torghast. Oh, what, you've had enough alpha news? Well, this is awkward. I mean, am I supposed to talk about BFA? Uh, okay, some corruptions are for sale from Mother. Go buy them? Uh, we could talk about the short story by Madeleine Rue. I mean, that's really last week's news, but we didn't have a show last week, so I guess we could touch on it. Basically, Lorthamar, confirmed to be using his deep baritone and not his lesser heard Waluigi voice. Go on ahead to Thalysra. Cut down any naga you encounter along the way. And Thalysra are thirsty. And it's the kind of thirst that no amount of arc wine can sate, you know? But we learn plenty about the two characters beyond the horn. Like, Lorthamar is really busy doing all his work for the new Horde Leadership Council, and Thalysra is... 
not so busy, even though she's supposed to be on the council too. Which means either Lorthamar is the most important, or he's the intern, and the reason he's so flat out is because everyone else has delegated him their crappy jobs to do while they chill out in Suramar writing poetry all day and watching porn, and he doesn't have the collie wobbles to stand up for himself. Which sounds like I'm making fun of him, but actually the main thing to take out of all of this is how awesome the Blood Elf leader is. I mean, look, he's a refined older gentleman who still looks great, scrubs up impeccably, is tough but educated, has a voice you could melt chocolate with, and appreciates poetry and fine wines. Basically, Lorthamar is Stanley Tucci. And now I know Lorthamar is Stanley Tucci, Lorthamar is my favorite character in WoW. Thank you, Madeline. The action seems like it leads straight into the new novel Shadows Rising, which is out on July 14th, which, I don't know, sounds like it might just be full of boning at this point, to be honest. And I hope you enjoyed that little literature review because it replaced the bit I was going to do on Torghast Torments. But in other alpha news, Wowhead has uncovered data that suggests druids may soon be able to choose their bear and cat forms separately from their other character customizations. At the moment, your humanoid form and animal form Forms are linked in terms of hair and fur color, just like in real life. Oh god, I'm still thirsty. But if Wowhead are correct, then Shadowlands will not only free players of those restrictions, but also allow you to choose different colors for your bear and cat forms, and possibly choose any artifact appearances you have unlocked without having to transmog into the correct weapon. Currently, none of these options are on the alpha, but then there are currently no night elves or worgen on the alpha either, presumably while they have the bulk of their new character customizations added. So maybe when they return we could see the first implementations of this. In the meantime, we can all enjoy the new armor sets that currently differentiate the class choices on the character select screen. And I think some of these are actually really great choices, like the Uldir set for the priest, that legion monk set with the shoulders that look like big beautiful zits you want to get in there and pop. I've always been a fan of the Antorus warlock set. I don't know why we've gone for the weird samurai sword for death knights, and I think jumping straight in with space paladin might be trying to run before you can walk, you know? There's not really too far you can go after space paladin. It's like making your first Batman Ben Affleck. He's already super angry and just killing people with no shits given. We should find the paladin armor set equivalent of Val Kilmer. Not a grade A classic, but perfectly adequate, leaves something better to aim for, and has great nipples. Oh god, I'm still thirsty, sorry. And then with a blue bot spoiler, because this is hidden in the data, but dragged kicking and screaming into the light by Wowhead, these new portraits, which are labeled as Kyrian Soulbinds. So these are the guys that you'll be able to choose between, which will each provide you with a kind of talent tree and new abilities. And uh, what do you notice about these? Well, one of them is a Swolkin, and so is automatically the one you'll choose, obviously. But about the other two? I don't know, these Boy Scout Smurf Lords look a bit weird to me, a bit Simpsons? I don't know if these Kyrian are supposed to have golden skin or if the colors are just inverted or wrong on the alpha. Maybe it's nothing or maybe I've just ruined a huge plot reveal. Who knows? But these are definitely some gold ass Kyrians. No point denying it. Another thing updated this week was the encounter journal for the Castle Nathria raid, which changed the name of the Kel'thas boss fight to Sun King's Salvation, which suggests that the third time might be the charm for Kelly Boy and that in this particular encounter, he makes it through the fight in one piece. Unless, of course, it's through his ultimate demise at the hands of our heroic adventurers that he finds salvation, in which case, sorry Kel'thas, but also you're welcome, but also sorry. But this got me thinking about something that's been on my mind about Castle Nathria ever since the alpha started. Because Castle Nathria is a 10 boss raid. That was confirmed at BlizzCon, here's the slide to prove it. But the dungeon journal has only ever had 9 bosses in it. So who is the mystery 10th boss of Castle Nathria? Well, it could be, as we speculated last year, that big gargoyle on top of the castle. That would clearly be awesome and stupid and I'd be totally down. But I don't really see why Blizz would want to keep that a secret. And the complete lack of anything in the journal suggests that keeping it a secret is definitely what they're trying to do. And that makes me think... Maybe the missing 10th boss is a major lore character, like more major than Kel'thas. And you know, I just can't stop thinking, what if it's Nathanos?
I mean, it makes sense, right? He's one of the main characters in the new novel. See, there totally was a reason for me reminding you of that earlier. We put a lot of planning into these scripts, okay? Main enough to have plenty of pages of setup as to why he might be a boss in Nathria. If Sylvanas and Sire Denathrius are both working for the Jailer now, then it makes sense Nathanos could be there helping Danny out against an enemy he knows well, us, and he would certainly be major and unexpected enough for Blizz to not put in the dungeon journal. I don't know. Am I totally crazy? Is this boss just going to turn out to be like a skeleton cat or something? What do you think? How about Nathanos and a skeleton cat? Or is that just being greedy? As usual, Wowhead have more detailed versions of pretty much everything we've talked about today. And all the relevant links are, as always, down in the description below. I can already imagine all the comments down below um, saying, oh, ever tell you look beautiful, but why didn't you talk about the Torghast torments? Why, why did you, why did you pull that trick? Do you want to know Ooh, why? Dirty trick, why? Because I just haven't really, I don't, I don't know, any, I don't know anything about them. I no. don't know anything about them. I had to put my energy into okay. reading that excerpt and that little short story by Madeline Rue. And you needed a little sleep after and that, And I needed a little sleep, story, so you? I kind of, I had to conserve my energy and put it where it was important. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, well done, you put it into the smut. And I appreciate that, and I appreciate you. Smut, excuse me. I mean, Madeline. It, is, it, it was is a, it was fine a, it had literature. It had some actual prose poetry in it, and it was very beautiful, but it's all about the boning. I know it, you know it, we all know it. It's about the stuff that leads to the Listen, boning. I'm saying that as a compliment. <laughs> okay, so you know Torghast, right? Yes. And you know that it's a never-ending thing, and you go, Mm -hmm. up and up and up. Well, some of the time it's never ending thing. Sometimes it's not a never ending thing anymore. But anyway, okay. you go up and up and up. Blizzard wanted to kind of make sure that you weren't like, because it's endless and there's no timer. Mm. They, uh, and that's the whole point. Uh -huh. They make, wanted to make sure so that you weren't like, I don't know, uh, just waiting to have your bloodlust up or your, your heroism up for every trash, gotcha. for every pull or whatever. Gotcha. So like, okay. you know, they wanted to have some kind of pressure to get through the floor. So right. uh, they put basically a timer in it, um, which are these torments, um, which kind of like uh, would build up over time. So every like 120 seconds, you take... 1% more damage or something like that. Okay. Um, and people didn't like that because they were like, oh, it's pressure to get mm. through and it's a, it's a timer which is completely against the whole ethos of the thing. Fair enough. Um, so they've looked at that. They've kind of removed the timer element of it now and they've just had it like go up when you get to different floors. Okay, and, that makes and, sense. Yeah, totally. And um, more importantly than that, in my opinion, they've kind of take away the ones that make your uh, character weaker and they're focusing just on ones that make the baddies badder. Which is much better because, uh, like, stuff that makes your character weaker is just not fun. That sucks. Like, you know, that doesn't feel oh, good. The, you know, the actual worst ones. Um, it weren't even the torments. They were like the uh, the the bad auras that certain like elites give off on a floor that will uh. make you move like half as fast. Oh, like that's never fun. No. Liz, can we have a little word? Like, it's good. It's good that you listen to this feedback, Blizz. It's good that you listen to the community and you made these changes. But can you listen to this feedback now, Blizz? Okay. Are you ready? Are you looking at me? Okay. Getting slower is never fun. No one likes that ever. It's rubbish. You know, like I, when I'm testing in Torghast at the moment, if I enter Torghast and it's the slow one, you're just like, no. I literally turn around, and walk oh, out. And, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and come, uh, I, I literally turn around and walk out. Get that rid of the slow sucks. thing, Blizz. I haven't even played that and it sucks. Yeah, totally. And like, cause you, I know what you're thinking, Blizz. You're thinking, oh, we have to find the elite and kill him so that you can move normal speed. Mm. No, you don't. No one does that. You mm. just like make it to the end as soon as you possibly can because it's so unfun, Aww. like being slow. It's it's boo. rubbish. Yeah, boo indeed. Um, and Blizz have also now confirmed that uh, there will be like two versions of uh, Torghast, one of which you will have to collect like a currency to enter um, and is like uh, still random, but it's where you get your like um, weekly legendary components from. Ah. So I'm sorry, Blizz. I'm sorry, like player base. This is exactly what I was worried about. That shit is not going to end up being as random as as the proper random oh. because it can't be. If it's yeah. tied to if it's tied to your power rewards, then some people might get something that's yeah. easier. Some people might get exactly. something harder. Exactly, and people yeah. might say I that's that. fine now, that. yeah. but once it goes live, people are gonna be like, ah, oh, excuse me, I got a really hard 
hard tour gas and I wasted the currency that I spent hours grinding. Yeah. The second you introduce a currency that you have to grind to enter, you oh. have to take some of the, um, the randomness out. Yeah. Because, I like, agree. you know, you can't grind for... Like, if you went into a horrific vision and it was, like, much harder than it usually is, mm. you'd be like, oh, come on, what? Just randomly. Yeah. You'd be like, no, mate, no. I get rage out. quit. Yeah, totally. I'd leave. And people will. And that's a shame because what it means is, like, no, we don't want a less random tour gas because yeah. that's super fun. Yeah. Anyway, I can hear the baby needs some attention, so we're going to have to end this episode. But luckily, it's already the end, so that's okay. Thank you for joining us today. Do you know what I did today? What I did you do today? I put in an order for our new pictures from the art competition. So oh. hopefully, before long, you'll see the new ones up. Oh, I can't wait. It'll be wait. sad to say goodbye to these ones. I we'll still be able to see them because they'll be in this room. We'll rotate like, them yeah. around every now and Maybe, then. Maybe, yeah. Just like we rotate them around now. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you for joining us. If you like this episode, don't thank us. Thank our patrons who give their uh, actual real life money to make all of our work happen. You know who you are. We know who you are. Without you, there'd be a whole lot less Talius Never Tell. Thank you. If you didn't like it, downvote the shit out of it. And remember, my name is D. Carter. That was enough to make Annie scream. He was like, yes, at last. A cool dad. No, my name is Taliesin from me. And me, Evertel. Until next time, cheerio. <laughs>